Good morning, Tucson. This is God's Random Act of Kindness show. We're, uh, we're sharing the good news of the Lord, and we have some really great stuff this morning. I, you know, God inspired me, and I believe that that's exactly what he's wanting me to share is... So, we know there's something wrong with our lives. We know that we want to uh, change them because it just doesn't feel right, like there's something missing. And, uh, and so we turn to Scripture, and then we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and then our, and we uh, get baptized, and, our, and our, our road begins. So um, that doesn't make everything special or perfect or whatever. It's, what it does is it uh, allows God to work within your heart and, and to guide you and start guiding you down that path that leads, him, that leads you back to him. So this morning, uh, the message is about how I can change my mind and and how you can do that by changing the way you look at things and 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 when you look at things differently you form different habits or or routines that uh allow you to be productive in your life and and you root out the things that are are are, are harming you that are keeping you from a close relationship with God and and so um that's what this message is about i think it's going to help because uh in there, and I'm, I'm speaking from my, my own experiences, from what the scriptures uh, speak about and guide you. And so I think that's going to um, be a message that's uh, worth listening to. So hold on to your hats, Tucson. And we've got a message for you this morning. It's got scripture. I've been, you know, and, and of course, uh, we all start uh, our morning with prayer and we've got our pad of paper and, and our pen and, and our journals. And, and we're, we're um, writing down. Uh, be the uh, events in our lives and, and that how God has changed us and so that we can revisit those later and and uh, gain strength and encouragement from it when we uh, we know that we're going to have struggles in the future until until God's uh, kingdom is brought to fruition but until then uh we're going to we're going to fight the good fight so Tucson let's start with prayer uh let's begin Good morning, Father. We thank you so much for today. This is a good day, God. Uh, we're excited about our future because we have chose to be with you. We accepted you, your son, and uh, as our Lord and Savior in the need. And uh, the Holy Spirit is helping us. And so we, we love you, Father, and we want to praise your holy name and, and thank you for everything that you've done. And uh, we, we do this uh, out of love, Father. Out, out, it's a gift that you've given us, and thank you for that amazing gift. Father, without that, um, without your grace, I don't think we could do anything, Pop. I just don't. And uh, thank you for loving us so much and giving us the desire to seek you through your scriptures, the desire to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And thank you for making us feel special, Father, holding our hands when we need you, picking us up when we fall. God, we, we acknowledge that uh, we need change and uh, we need you. And we need you to guide us in that change. And so uh, thank you for for caring so much about us, Dad. And we, we pray that we can glorify your name in, in our actions and our words and our thoughts. And, and so we, we do this by looking within ourselves and uh, changing the things that um, don't align with your will and, 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 and recognizing that uh, it's okay that we're not right, but... It's not okay to stay that way. Thank you, God. Good morning, Father. We pray all this in your precious Son's name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Tucson. Get ready for a cool message. It's going to be how I can change my life. And, uh, you know, it, it's we all got to do it. We all got to look inside ourselves constantly, uh, taking an inventory and making sure we're not uh, we're not kidding ourselves, trying to trying to fit the world's ideas into uh, into the truths that are within the Bible. So, good morning. Okay, let's continue. So, today's scriptures are going to be Isaiah chapter 41, starting with verse 10, Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 24, and uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 10. Now, I give those to you earlier so that you can look those up and uh, reread those later. I think that that's going to be important so that you can uh, really drive the message home in your hearts and so you'll be able to remember it and, and benefit from it uh, throughout your life. And so you'll always have these really great scriptures to help you. Uh, so as we go on with the study on how to change your mind and, and how to uh, 
to uh, live a, a life that's um, in line with God's will, uh, it, it's important to, to look at what's holding you back. That's right. What, what is, is actually holding you back? And then you need to confront that. And, um, and that's going to give you the, uh, the strength to, to walk in that direction. But uh, again, I want to pray right now. Uh, dear Father, we pray that you give me the words that will, will help the, the listeners, that will, that will guide them and, and lead them back to you, Father, that uh, it'll be your words and not mine. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're going to continue on. Uh, what do you think is holding you back from being a successful follower of the Lord? I believe that uh, the fear of failure uh, where, whether it was ingrained into you in the way you were raised or whether it's happened in your life experiences where you have failed and you didn't count on God, uh, that's, um, that might be what's holding you back. I'm not sure. It's, you're going to have to look inside your own hearts and, and figure out what that is. But um, as long as you uh, have that fear in your life and you don't offer it up to God, it's going to be hard to overcome it. So you have to acknowledge it and then you need to deal with it. So how do you do that? Uh, well, um, you start by seeking the scriptures and having a personal relationship with God every morning. You do that, uh, as we spoke about earlier, with uh, baptism and the Holy Spirit's help and and uh, reading God's word. And so it's going to be in God's word that's going to change you, not a, a, a podcast show, not a... Uh, even a, a pastor can't do it for you. It's going to have to come from within inside. It's a gift from God. It's a, it's a grace that you pray for, a mercy that... Uh, allows you to be better than you are. And then that's a wonderful thing. And then you realize that there's something more. And, and, and when there's something more, you, you, you know, you've got this innate desire inside you that's telling you that you're not happy with the way things are and that you want to change. And, and how do you do it? And you just feel like you're, you can't do it, but, uh, but you can. You can do it with God's help and uh, with his grace. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at how we're going to be able to do that. And so, the first thing is to have trust that God will not fail you, um, even though you may have failed in the past, that he's not going to fail you. Uh, you need to surrender, and, and you need to uh, surrender that um, those habits that have formed, that have caused you to uh, you know, go down a road that was more worldly than it is spiritually back to, to God and, and, and Jesus. And so you're going to do that by um, laying down what has caused you to uh, not be close to God. And we're going to take this in small chunks, so it's, it's going to be a big message and a beautiful message. So I encourage you to, uh, to have your pad and paper and your pen and uh, write down some notes as we go. Uh, so fear is going to be a, uh, a dictator, and, and, and God does not want you to have fear. He doesn't want you to be scared of him. Uh, it's you know the fear of God is more of a reverence, knowing that He is the great Creator of all things, and that you you have this will to, and this desire to honor Him, and and uh, you realize that without God in your life, without uh, the uh, the great promise, that you're missing something. So, uh, and and let's let's just be real about what fear does to you. And, and, and remember, we're looking at the fear of failure, the fear of this and that, and the other thing, the fear the world offers. Uh, it can affect your health. I mean, there's no question about that. It's been proven. It can affect your your cardiovascular system. It's been known to cause hypertension, headaches. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it can add stress and anxiety to your life. And, and it affects the way you eat and, and, and how you exercise if you want to or how you want to take care of your own bodies, or your own self-esteem. So fear can have a great effect on your emotions. And so your emotions can affect your health. And then your health can affect everything else in your life. And so that's um, going to uh, create more fear. And then so it just kind of keeps piling on top of each other. So by offering that up to God, he takes that from you. And then he gives you this uh, happiness amongst the tough times. And he gives you this strength and this desire to keep your, your you know, your your body in, in its best possible shape as you can uh, by eating right and exercising and and just having right thought and, and it just I don't know it's, I don't know it's just all that stuff I can I can honestly tell you it's true because in my worst times in my life you know I was very heavy and uh, and then 
um, when I started to get closer to God, uh, the pounds dropped off, the 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 uh, the fears dropped off. The um, by serving others, by looking to God, and to uh, realizing that my world is bigger than um, the way that I've been living it. So, speaking from my own personal experience, but God wants us to be His show. Let's stay on track. He wants you to learn about this through the scriptures, and so uh, we're going to keep sharing that way. So uh, I think it's important to understand that God does not want you to measure up to someone else's uh, wheel. He wants you to measure up to be the best that we can achieve um, each individually. So uh, we all have something we bring to the table and what we can share with others. And so by being our best good every day, we can fulfill our life destiny. And uh, that ultimately uh, helps us... uh, to understand how we fit into God's kingdom. And uh, and, uh, and it also fulfills the original intention uh, that we were all meant to be servants of God, to be uh, citizens of heaven. And, and uh, you know, through Adam and Eve's original sin, uh, we were brought, we were brought outside of God's will. And we've been fighting ever since, guys. And so until, you know, he, God comes back and... Christ uh, brings about this new kingdom that was promised, and it will happen. Uh, we need to be on guard, and we need to um, we need to you know take a look inside ourselves to be our best goods, and then we're going to want to look at others to help them and do whatever we can to uh, to be part of uh, this big picture stuff, rather than our little picture of just trying to uh, fulfill our own personal needs. So let's carry on. Let's keep going, Tucson. I hope you like the message so far. It's I think it's a really great one. Uh, we're going to look at scripture, and um, afterwards, uh, it's going to give us a nice uh, feeling of how the God's instruction is in the Bible. So uh, let's uh, let's hold on right there, and uh, and we'll gather up some more some more inspiration for you. Sounding good, huh, Tucson? Stay tuned for more. Okay, Tucson, let's continue on. We're in Isaiah chapter 41. And let's see, did you go get your Bible out and uh, go ahead and go to it? Find this Isaiah. And that's going to be in the Old Testament just after Psalms. And uh, and that will, um, and uh, yes, the Old Testament is cool. Uh, a lot of people think that it's, you know, just uh, not as uh, life changing as the New Testament, because you know that's the New Testament features that when Jesus came about and uh, and uh, came to this world, where the Old Testament was um, almost like a precursor of introducing that Christ was coming. But there's so much more in there, so I encourage you to spend time in the Old Testament as well. So going to chapter 42, uh, verse 10, uh, we were talking about fear and uh, God was teaching us through the scriptures through Isaiah. So it goes on to say, don't be afraid for I am with you. I am with you. I am has been uh, noted as God and uh, that's his name. I am. And uh, so don't be discouraged, it goes on to say, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Now popping out of scripture, that is what God's promising. He says that, you know, if you want to make change in your life, and so you, it almost feels overwhelming, like, you, gosh, I don't know how to do it, Lord. I just can't do it. Well, probably true. You can't do it without God's grace and God's help. He will pick you up. He will hold your hand as you make these big life changes in your in your life that are going to lead you closer to God that are anti-world. And so these um this thinking is not going to be easy, but it's worth fighting for everyone. So keep fighting, fight that good fight. Um uh we're going to look a little farther now at uh so what is it going to be? What's going to be the most powerful tool that you're going to have that it's going to help you to win this fight? So what do you think? It's going to be scripture, everybody. It's going to be the word of God. And so when you read scripture every morning, it really is the best thing that you could possibly do for you. It's the best good. It's going to give you the strength to uh, get through that day and 
and to make those right decisions with your words and your mind and, and your and your actions. And uh, that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to live a life that's you know centered in in, in God's will. So He's going to strengthen you. And uh, so even though you may feel weak at this point, um, pray for God's will and and His strength, and uh, He'll pick you up and hold you, because He's the Great I Am. It's so. Uh, so I, I guess we're going to ha- – that leads us to the whole question. I want to ask you a question, everyone. Um, do you believe in the scripture? I mean, I mean, is it still true? I mean, this was, writ- this was written before even Jesus came. It's in the Old Testament. Well, uh, if you do, and uh, you're going to draw strength through that message, that it's that time uh, – that uh, – time message that never ends that God gave us for future generations as well. It's the same message as it was in the old days and, and it's still pertinent today. So, um, you accept it as truth. And so you, you write it in your hearts and you, and you believe that this is a a promise to God that he'll strengthen you if you turn to him. So how's that for some, uh, for some spiritual strength to help you change Tucson? I mean, that's gonna, that's gonna give you that and whoever's listening, wherever you are that's going to give you the strength that you need that's going to help you to make those changes in your lives that are are going to make a difference yeah they will and uh, god is is trustworthy and he doesn't break promises there's no lies in the scriptures no lies in the, in the you know people have tried to uh research the scriptures and say oh this never happened that never happened no one has ever been able to prove that no one even the 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 world's most staunchest uh, atheists tried to disprove it and they couldn't do it and so when someone tells you that it's just a bunch of words and uh, that things change through time and the way that people write it, just don't believe them they're just uh, been bamboozled by the by the the world's uh, trickery so don't let that happen uh, you guys are on your road and stay on that road and uh, be strong in God's in promises and and, and Lay down uh, this fear so that you can you can take another step towards God, and then uh, and then you got to believe. You got to have faith, even though those doubts will pop in. Uh, you got to believe, Tucson, and that uh, God's got your best good in hand, and so uh, He does too. So it all boils down to one thing y'all it, it, it's a faith battle and so you're battling this um, this life story faith battle and and you're writing your story and and you just don't want to give up um, you don't want to start on this this walk and then oh it's too hard or gosh i thought i would when i was when i chose jesus that it, my life would get better and it's only gotten worse you, oh yeah it gets tough man because it's only going to be for a little while i mean Eternity compared to 80 years or 90 years old, it's nothing. It's a blink of an eye to God. Um, eternity is forever. And so don't don't sacrifice your eternity for uh, for a brief moment of time. Uh, don't be so busy in whatever you're doing that you don't think about God. And, and uh, he's just waiting for you to turn to him so that he can help you. So uh, that's a cool message, don't you think? He's the God of the universe, man. He made everything. He's waiting for you to to uh, acknowledge him so that uh, he can help you. And uh, so that's what it's all about. Uh, and then so that we can help others too because um, you gotta, you got to believe that we're all his creations and he doesn't want one to not, uh, not understand this. And so I think the best way to end all, the, all this teaching this morning is going to be in Scripture. So we're going to go ahead and go to the final Scriptures today and uh, we're turning to, let's see. We're going to turn to Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 22 through 24. And uh, let's find it. Colossians. Okay. Even I have to find it. So hold on. So uh, chapter 3, verse 22. And here it is. We're going to take it a little bit farther down. Um Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless. 
as you stand before him without a single fault. What that is saying to me, and you got to decide what it means to you, is that now you are a new creation, that the old you is put beside, and now you are you're just a different person and and uh, this this uh new birth is um exciting and 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 wonderful and it allows you to continue on this walk that uh, builds you and helps you to become stronger and stronger and and more faithful and uh and so that's what the whole goal is is to be more faithful and uh we're going to do that uh um, through through scripture and and so we're going to go to now um oh gosh i lost my last one here we're going to go to colossians uh the closing scripture will be chapter one verse nine and then so lord thank you for this amazing message this morning of of being able to control our fears and, and offering them up to you and uh we close with this scripture. Um, we ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and, and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Uh, then the way that you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Good morning, Tucson and everybody listening. What an amazing message. Don't live your lives in fear anymore, everyone. It's uh, it's just a, a uh, it's just not of God. God wants you to be courageous, and uh, He wants you to have the tools, and He'll enable you to uh, to have those tools if you if you seek Him every day, and and you pray, and you ask for His help, and you lay down those fears, and and you just kind of you know you're just kind of feeling your way through life with God's help, and it's just beautiful. So good morning, Tucson. God bless everybody with this message. And uh, this is Mikey and Marshall Boone signing off. I hope you like the message.